Getting into the trades, some people wonder if going to college is the right thing for them or if they may do better getting in the trades. Let me tell you what, you can do great getting into the trades. First of all, I'm gonna tell you what I consider the trades from the construction side. And when I say construction, a lot of this is construction, but a lot of it can also be done on service because homeowners need a lot of these things fixed all the time. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is being a roofer. Now there's commercial, there's residential, new construction, and there's service. What would you like to do? Now I've got a free mini course here on my YouTube channel where it asks you what kind of plumber you'd wanna be, but really it can go for any of the trades whether you want to be residential or commercial, do new construction or service, and even be in the union or not. And there's options out there for you in just about every one of these construction trades I'm going to talk about. I'm going in order from lowest to highest as to possible income as a journeyman or maybe even a master in some of these trades. So roofer would probably be one of the lowest paying, even though it's probably one of the hardest jobs. And when I say lowest paying, I mean, if you're actually the roofer out on the job installing the roof. Next up from there would probably be carpenter. Now I've done some research and you get these in all kinds of different orders, but you can also make really good money if you're a fancy finish out carpenter doing cabinets, custom cabinets, custom built-ins, things like that. You can also get into the trades as a framing carpenter, just building new residential homes. If you become a commercial carpenter, you're probably going to get into metal framing and stuff like that. If so, you may want to check out the YouTube channel, Construction Cronies. Chris talks about that all the time. The next two up from there would be HVAC technician. Now HVAC technician, again, commercial or residential service or new construction. It really depends on what you want to do and how you want to do it. So figure that out first, because I'm telling you, I'm also a certified HVAC technician. I got my HVAC certification in case I ever want to grow my plumbing company and do something else. That's a good one to think about. But remember the pitfalls to it in the summer, you're in the attics. It's hot because people need their AC worked on. So it's liable to be really hot. Then again, in the winter, you're liable to be in the attic working on the furnace because it's really, really cold and that's normally where they're at. Now, sometimes they're in a closet, but in commercial jobs, it can lead to even bigger work. Big, huge duct, hung overhead, going up and down chases, and in big mechanical rooms. So it can literally be a lot of fun. Now, the next one is my favorite. That's a plumber. Again, if you're not sure what kind of plumber you may wanna be, or really any one of these trades, go check out the mini course and figure it out. I have done all things plumbing. I've done commercial and residential, service and new construction. I've done non-union, union, now I'm non-union again. So I've done a little bit of all of it. That's why I'm so comfortable talking about it. Plumbing to me is a great career opportunity. It's a wonderful profession. They've got electricians listed next as higher up. Plumbers and electricians are probably two of the top levels when it comes to the trades and construction or service. But there's a couple of more right above that. Actually, the next one up is pretty cool. An elevator technician. Now, elevator technicians do elevators and escalators. It's actually a pretty cool deal. Their union is amazing. And most of those you're not gonna find residential, although there are some residential elevator installs. Most of these are commercial. The cool thing about it is these guys make good money, they have great benefits, and they have a better retirement plan than the plumbers union does. I'm not sure about the IBEW, the electricians, but I think they've got a pretty good retirement plan too. Theirs and ours are probably pretty close, but the elevator union, it is phenomenal. Now the last one, you've probably got to be part crazy to try. That's a glazier. Now glazers sometimes are in the building on the floor installing glass, but these guys also sometimes end up on the outside doing some trim work. I've been on some jobs where I've seen glazers up 45, 50 stories in the air outside working on a deck. Sounds like fun, but you've probably got to be a little bit crazy to want to do something like that. Let's talk about how you actually get into these jobs. Now I've got more videos about how to get started in the trades. And remember guys, a lot of times I talk plumbing, but really it's, it's anything in the trades. Take out the word plumber, put in the word electrician. A lot of my videos, it can relate. So think about it that way. Go through and look at them. If you want to know 
how to go through the interview process, how to find the right job, how to do things like that. I go deeper into depth in a lot of those videos. The first thing is finish high school, get your diploma or get a GED. The reason being, in order to be a licensed professional in some states, you've got to have your diploma or you've got to have a GED. So don't think just by quitting high school, you're going to go be a plumber. Believe it or not, most of us have a pretty good education. But if you're seriously thinking about getting into the trades, some of this stuff, you can even start at home. Talk to your parents. If you're still living at home and you want to get into the trades, say you want to be a plumber, ask your mom or your dad, look, would it be okay if y'all went and bought a new kitchen faucet and I learned to change it out for you? Maybe even a toilet. There's a lot of things that you can do working around the house to kind of get a feel for it and decide if it's something you would enjoy doing. So think about that. Is there anything around the house you could do to help your parents out and you could figure out, hey, is this something I enjoy doing or not? Really, it's a great place to start. So after you've played around with it at the house and figured out which one you wanna do, now you've got a choice. Do you go to trade school? Do you go to community college where maybe they teach some of these things? If so, that'd be a good place to start. Your other alternative, if think about either joining the union or going to work for a company, hopefully that has a training program. Now, a lot of companies are associated with PHCC. PHCC has a good training program for plumbers and HVAC technicians. So if you can find a job working for the right company and do a good enough job for them that they wanna invest in you, send you to school and let you learn the trade, it can benefit you so much. Cool thing about it, you're not paying to go to college. So what do you wanna do? Figure that out and then figure out how to go through the process of getting into it and getting started. Once you do that, once you get a job, you are now an apprentice. Whether that's through the union, whether it's open shop, wherever, it's up to you to learn. So you wanna make sure that if you're in an apprentice training program, you go to school with the idea of, hey, I'm here to learn. Always try to be the best. If you're not, there's a problem because those people in the room with you, that's gonna be your competition for the rest of your career. Say you stay in that union for the rest of your life. If you do, here's what happens. You're either gonna work for those people or they're gonna work for you. So start looking at it now and figure out, do you wanna be the best? Do you wanna move up? Or do you wanna be the guy that is just a journeyman for the rest of his career? There's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people make a great living in the trades being a journeyman, being an installer, being a technician. Some people don't wanna be foreman, don't wanna be superintendents, don't wanna move up into project management or construction management. So that's a choice you have to make. But one thing I'll tell you is even if you wanna be a journeyman, try to be the very best journeyman that's ever done this craft. If you try to do that, you're always gonna be sought after, people are always gonna want you, and the big deal is you're always gonna have a job. After your apprenticeship, then you become a journeyman. After that, you become a master. After that, it's up to you. You can own your own company. You can do a lot of things you wanna do. Like I said, you never have to move up beyond journeyman. To be honest, I know apprentices that have been apprentices for 15 years. They couldn't pass the test or they were just afraid of the test. Here's the one thing I'll tell you. Getting into the trades can change your life. It can help you get up and out of whatever situation you're in. If you don't like working in a fast food restaurant, get into the trades. I've given you some great opportunities and some great ideas here. If you're already thinking about getting into the trades, do me a favor, leave me a comment down below and let me know what trade you're thinking about getting into. And if you have not done it yet, look in the link below for the free mini course, go over to it, check it out and figure out, do you wanna do residential or commercial, service or new construction, union or non-union, and then come back and leave me a comment and let me know what you thought about the mini course and what you think you wanna do. I hope this has helped you out a lot. It really would have helped me out before I got into the trades knowing a lot of these things. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.